this is David. We're continuing our walk through the Angular tutorial. In the last video I showed you how to use this hero editor to do both one-way and two-way data binding. And if we take a look at what we did here, you see here's our application that's still running and it has this one-way data binding here which displays what's at whatever's in the model. And uh, here we have two-way data binding which not only displays what's in the model but if I change it, it updates the model, which in turn updates anything that's bound to that model, like this right here. And it does so right away. So let's go on to the next lesson, which is displaying a list. Now here we're going to create a list. We'll hard code a list. We'll call it heroes. And it is a type array of hero. And the hero comes from our hero class up here. Array of hero, we just hard coded these 10 heroes with an ID and a name. Mr. Nice, Narco, Bombasto, etc. So let's go ahead and create this one here. MockHeroes.ts We'll add a new file. Mock-Heroes.ts Remember TS is TypeScript which transpiles down to JavaScript. And then we're going to use that and we'll use it in our Heroes component here. So in order to use it, we'll import it Notice that this has ex export music available to other classes. We're going to import that this that heroes array from mock heroes. So let's go ahead and do that in our heroes.component.ts. Heroes.component.ts. So we will import that and then we're going to add this hero heroes property and just set it equal to that array that we've imported. So here's my class, and we'll add the heroes property right there. All right. And now we want to display that heroes property. And we want it to look something like this, you know, a way of display it's an array, so we want to have an unordered list, right? That makes sense. We'll have unordered list and every element will be this li and inside of that we'll have the hero.id and the hero.name of each hero. Um, so it looks something like this, but how do we make sure that, uh, that that we have an li and this internal part for every single one of elements that list? We don't know ahead of time. You know, if we're getting this from a database, we might have 10 elements, we might have 100 elements. We don't really know at design time what it's going to be. Um, fortunately, there are programming-like constructs in Angular that allow us to do that, and one of those is this ng4 construct. So the ng4 is similar to a for loop in a programming language that will loop through every element in a collection or an array, and it, it will output, it'll, it'll, it'll process it for each one of those. So the, in this case, the array is heroes, and every element will be named hero, and the let just scopes it to this. Uh, the star, by the way, <clears throat> says that when you repeat it, repeat this whole thing, this, this element as well, and not just what's inside of it. So let's do something like that. We'll, we'll grab this here and put that into our HTML component right there. So, oops, right there. And but we'll replace the li with this li containing the ng4 and therefore it will be repeated. Alright, let's take a look at that, see if it worked. And it did. You see that below my heroes we have each one of these here, all ten of them are repeated. Now that styling leaves a little something to be desired if we look back at this here. You'll see that's not very pretty. Let's let's style a little bit better. And we do actually have in our code for our component, we do have a set of style URLs. Those were the CLI automatically created this line here, and it even created the heroes.component.css. But there's nothing in there. It's blank. It's up to us to add some style to it. And so we're going to grab the style, and for some reason in the tutorial, they actually, instead of putting it in line, they put it way down at the bottom. So come down here and grab that style sheet and copy it and paste it into here. And you can see that there are the heroes, the li, and uh, if it's selected, it has a element. So when you hover over it, then 
it does something special. So if we take a look at it now, it looks really nice here. And if I hover over them, it has that nice effect right there and it, so on. There's even something here for selected, although we have no way of actually setting that selected class. It's not set manually in here. We'll get to that later. All right, let's come back up to where we were. And now we want to do a, 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 a master detail. So we want to set the selected. If we look at this, you notice down here at the bottom of the details, we always have Windstorm. Windstorm is even on the list here, but it's been hard-coded in here. So that's all that we have right here. What would be nice is if we clicked on one of these and it automatically updated this. So let's do that. We're going to add something to the, the on-click event of this. And that's what we do right here. So the click right here, this is how we bind in Angular. This is how we bind to an event. We put parentheses around the name of the event and set it equal to the function in our class, in our module that we're going to, or in our component that we're going to actually run, including any parameters we'll pass to that. So let's do that. Copy this code here. And in the HTML template, we'll change the li to that. So now it has this click. Now this won't work now because there is no on select. We'll have to add the on select. And here it is right here. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new property called selected hero. It's a replace. Right now we have one called hero. And on select here, we'll pass in an, uh, a parameter of type hero. And when it runs, we'll set the selected hero to whatever, whichever hero was passed in. So let's do that right here. This is in the component. This is going to replace that hard-coded hero with the selected hero of type hero. And then when the, the, when the user right here, when they click on one of these LIs, then on select hero will pass in, will pass in whichever one was selected here. All right, this almost works. Let's show what happens when I go back to here. It's strange, isn't it, that there's no data. And why is there no data here? If I click on this, nothing happens. And the reason is, actually, we can get a clue to that. If I press F12 and go to the console, let's refresh that page so we can just see it. We can see, unable to get property name of undefined or no. There's actually a couple of problems here. One is that down here in our component, we are binding to hero.name. Well, when it, we change the property, it's not no longer called hero.name. Now it's called selected hero. So let's let's change that first. So we've got hero.name will be selected hero.name and hero.id becomes selected hero.id. I kind of like that because it doesn't conflict with this. Actually, the scoping would Means that's not a problem, but it's still not right. If I go back to here, I'll refresh, and I'm, it's still not working. And here it is. Here's a clue right here. Unable to get property name of undefined or null reference. So where's the property name of the undefined or null reference? Well, let's take a look at what's going on here. Right here, there's, there's the property name. So that tells us this is undefined or null. Selected hero. Let's go back to our component, and we see here we've declared selected hero, but we haven't initialized it. So right now it's set to null, and that's why we're getting errors, is because null.name is causing a problem. And there's a couple of ways we could deal with this. One is we could just randomly pick one, um, you know, pick one of the heroes and set it to that. Uh, we, you know, we could hard code it in here. Um, we can pick the, you know, first element of the array, or whatever. Um, the other way we could deal with it, which is in the tutorial, is down here. We can specify whether or not to show this entire section. So this entire section right here, we can suppress it based on certain conditions. 
and we can do so using NGF. NGF says that if this is set to something called falsy, <laughs> uh, there's truthy and falsy, which is sort of like true and false, but in fact it is, uh, what it really means is that uh, if it's, it's false, if it's uh, if it's actually the value of false, or if it's zero, or if it's null, or if it's undefined, all those things are falsy. Everything else is truthy. And if that's falsy, then it will actually not display anything. In fact, not only will it not display, but it will not be part of the DOM, and therefore it won't try to evaluate this. So that's what we want to do. We're going to come in here, we're going to surround this whole thing with, oops, with this right here. This right here. That div. And now, when the page first loads, oops, page first loads, I can make that a little bit nicer by formatting the document, then this part down here is suppressed. We don't have a problem with it. I can close this. And when I select one, now select a hero, it does actually have something. I have a problem with that ID. Why is my ID bad? Uh, selected hero dot ID is a problem. Let's see if we can figure that out. And oh, it looks like I have a problem right here that I need to change this one to also to selected hero. So selected hero dot name, selected hero ID, and selected hero dot name. I missed that. I've also noticed I've piped this to uppercase. So this pipe here says convert whatever this is into uppercase. So let's see if that works. Come back to here. And it should auto refresh, but just in case, I'll do that. And then click on Narco here, and there we go. So now we get uppercase of whatever's bound to the selected hero dot name, and we also get the details of that. Uh, the word details and hard hard coded, and then ID and this. Click on Magma, and that comes up. And these again are data bound, two way data bound. So this changing this change the model which in turn changes anything that's bound to that model such as this and this right here etc and the final thing I'd like to do is that when I click on one of these things like magma set that back um, there's no indication up in this list that I've actually clicked on it'd be nice to style it differently and we actually did set we do know which one is the selected hero so we can add some code to style that. The code is right down here. So in our um, HTML, we have a class, or in our style sheet, let's show you in our style sheet, there's a class called selected, which has a different background color and color and we can set that class dynamically in code so that in this style sheet here, rather than this, in this um, template here, we can specify something like this. Set class.selected equals hero equals selected hero. So if this, one, if this particular hero happens to be the selected hero, then we're going to apply the selected class to that element, whatever element we're, we happen to have clicked on. And by applying the select class, it'll just set that uh, special color and background color. So we'll do that. We'll put it in here. Here's the whole li tag. I'll just grab the whole thing here and paste it in like so and save it. And now when I click on this, it actually sets a nice style, a different style, so we know which one is selected. All right, um, that concludes this one. And if you have, if there are any issues that you have, it's not working for you. You can always come down here, and these are the three files that we changed. Take a look at those, compare your code with that. If you if you still can't figure it out, just copy and paste it in, so you can move on to the next lesson. This is David. Thank you for watching.